Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and since we're going to be talking GMRS today uh, in the GMRS world, also WRTI407, and today I'm happy to be here looking at another ocean radio. In this case, we're going to be taking a look today at the KGS88 Golf, which is a GMRS-specific HT. With some interesting features, it's a very uh, interesting radio. I happen to like it a lot. But if you've been tracking with the channel at all, you probably noticed that uh, lately I've been talking a lot about ocean radios, and I've been using ocean radios quite a lot. The KG935 Golf I talk about quite a bit, and this is currently my, my favorite uh, GMRS radio, and in, in my estimation, about the, the best you can buy in terms of GMRS currently. However, um, my KGUV9 Papa, which is my daily EDC radio and goes on my gear bag with me to work every single day, well, there's a version of this that's GMRS, and as much as I like that, I'm betting I'm going to like that other one too, and we'll soon see. But for today, the subject of our attention is going to be the Ocean KG S88 Golf. A um, few things to talk about here. First off, I bought this myself, $139 from Buy 2 A Radio. And uh, in, in fact, that's pretty much where I get all of my ocean stuff. Now, this is a monoband GMRS specific HT. And when I say monoband, I mean that this thing will only operate in terms of transmit and receive in the UHF band. So it is not a dual bander on receive as radios such as the KG935 Golf are. This will do GMRS, but it will also receive UHF and VHF um, radio frequencies, but this will not. This is a, uh, a single display mono band radio. Now, for some that are looking for a radio with a high degree of versatility, this isn't the radio for you. But I can appreciate uh, radios that are very mission specific and very focused, and that's what this radio is. For what it lacks in terms of versatility, it makes up in terms of being an excellent, excellent GMRS transceiver. And I'll discuss that in just a little bit when we start talking about the receiver. But um, basically what we're talking about here when getting back to the, uh, the UHF band and transmit, this will transmit between 462 and 467 megahertz, and it'll transmit specifically and, and only on those frequencies that have been assigned to GMRS channels by the FCC Part 95. In terms of receive, this will receive from 400 to 480 megahertz. So there is some capability if you're interested in using this to monitor some public safety frequencies, if your uh, particular area uses UHF a lot, you might get lucky. But this isn't the kind of radio that's for that. This is, you know, there's some folks that uh, that like to have their transceivers be both a transceiver and a scanner. I'm one of those people, uh, so I like a high channel count. I like to be able to put a lot of stuff in there in terms of monitoring to gather intelligence. But that isn't what this radio is really meant to do. This radio is not necessarily, it'll scan, but uh, it's, it's not necessarily a scanner. Uh, this is uh, rather in, instead, and I use this term again, very focused, very mission-specific GMRS radio. So if what you want to do is have a radio to, to, to talk on GMRS and be amongst the best that can do that, this is one for you. So let's get back to uh, features again. This has 400 memory channels. Now there's no way to allocate those memory channels into banks or uh, in the world in the world of ocean. What they use is a thing called scan groups. Uh, for instance, both the uh, UV9 Papa and the KG935 have scan groups that are basically there's 999 memory channels, and the scan groups are broken up into 10 banks of 100 channels each. This does not have that capability, so it's either uh, added to scan or deleted from scan. And since, again, we're going to be using this mainly as just a, a GMRS transceiver, you know, having the uh, 22 simplex channels and 8 repeater channels or however more repeater um, repeaters that you have programmed in, it's not a huge chunk of information to get through. I have this loaded up with a lot of GMRS information, including uh, I've got my 22 simplex channels, and I have in addition to that, between channels 15 and 22, I have an additional for each channel slot, I have an additional four channels that are set up with privacy codes. And then beyond that, I think I've got, uh, I think I have 11 
uh, repeat. No, I'm sorry, I have 18 repeaters that are currently programmed into this. And it's pretty easy to program. This isn't supported by Chirp, so you have to use the, uh, the CPS that's provided by Ocean, but it's not a bad CPS. It just doesn't do some of the, we kind of get spoiled with Chirp, having that ability to move large chunks of information up and down the spreadsheet. It won't do that, so it's a little clunky in that regard, but it's not a bad program. Um, but uh, like I said, not supported by Chirp. Now, Getting back to uh, the number of memory channels, 400 should be perfectly adequate for, for your needs in terms of setting this up for uh, the GMRS channels. And this does come from the factory programmed with the 22 simplex channels and 8 repeater channels already set up. All you have to add is CTCSS tones. But I tend to just scrap all of that and I go with my own programming sequence. And the nice thing about this, this is this lets you lay it out pretty effectively. I didn't really have any, any problems with the uh, CPS at all. This will use, uh, because it does utilize a K1 type plug for the speaker mic, um, it also utilizes K1 type programming cables. And I'll let you know, I programmed this as well as all of my other um, Ocean uh, HTs I program with a Beofang UV5 R programming cable. So you don't have to go and buy the fancy red cable unless you really want to, or you might have, be having trouble with drivers, but I've got Windows 11 and I got my driver situation finally sorted out, so I don't have a problem using those cables. Programs up just nicely. Now, something really interesting about this radio, and it's probably its, its primary party piece, is the receiver itself. The Ocean, and I keep referring back to this, but this is going to be a natural uh, reference because this is 139 and this is 149. They're both Ocean radios. This one does do a lot more than this one, but there's some things that it doesn't do as well. And a big one is the receiver. The receiver on the Ocean KG 935 Golf is a direct conversion receiver. It's not a bad receiver. It's got decent filtering, and I've never really had any problem with the front end going dead on me or, or it getting, uh, you know, going deaf in a high RF environment, but it can happen. The S88 Golf has a super heterodyne receiver, and that's a bit of a rarity when it comes to a GMRS HT. That's kind of a kind of a fancy piece of hardware to include in that. And what that means is you're going to have a receiver that is traditionally a lot better than most direct conversion receivers out there. It's not a it's not a deal breaker for me, but it's something that uh, that I find a, a pretty positive selling point on a radio if it has that, and the S88 Golf definitely does. So let me check here and see if there's anything else to, to add from the notes before we do the walk around on the radio. And yes, there is. Another interesting party piece about this radio, and it's something that makes it a particularly effective MCOM radio, is that this is IP67. Now, again, KG935 Golf is IP54, which means that it's, it'll, it'll, take a, it'll take a spray but it will not take a submersion in water. It won't resist water intrusion. However, the IP67 rated S88 Golf can be submerged to a depth of one meter for 30 minutes, will re uh, resist water intrusion into the chassis during that time. That's kind of an important thing. So if you ended up having to do, for instance, a stream crossing or were in a particularly really wet, wet, wet environment, this is a good radio for that. Now, something to note is your speaker mic cover here, the IP67 rating is only in place so long as this speaker mic cover is closed and this little part that I'll get to in a minute is closed. If this is removed and you have a speaker mic plugged in, it's no longer IP67 rated. That's one downside because it's not a gasketed, screwed-in connection. But there are some gasketed speaker mics out there that might allow you to retain maybe IP54 weather resistance. But if you're if you really think you're going to be using this in a, in a very very wet environment, I suggest you keep this cover on. Now let's get to this little part right here, and this is something that people are really really um, looking for in new radio designs, and it's something I'm a little ambivalent on, but I definitely do see the viability, and I do see how it's an asset to have in an MCOM radio and that is USB-C charging. The USB-C charge port is directly behind this cover here, and you see a, a little screw there, and you're probably thinking, well, in the field, what if I don't have a screwdriver? Well, they provide you with two of these little thumb screws. I'm guessing one of them is a spare, because you only need one, but you remove that screw, put this thumb screw in, and then you don't need a screwdriver to open this port and charge in the field. So what that means is if you're out in the field, 
the ability to uh, to plug into a USB outlet, uh, especially since those things are, are as common as can be nowadays, that gives you a, an extra uh, ability to charge. And then you don't have to take a charge cradle to the field with you. But if you prefer more conventional charging methods, Ocean does provide you with a very nice charge cradle that uh, allows you to drop the radio in and charge it. Works pretty fast, so uh, they cover both bases pretty effectively. Now, um, at this point, let's go ahead and do sort of a walk around on the radio. And if I remember anything else, I'll, I'll let you know as we go through. But as usual, we'll start at the top of the radio. And we'll start with a feature that's probably my favorite when it comes to radios. And that is this separate volume and channel control knob at the top of the radio that allows you to make adjustments to the radio in terms of the volume or in terms of switching from one channel to another without having to extract the radio from a pouch. So the uh, moving over to the volume knob real quick, obviously turning that turns the radio on and then all the way left turns the radio off. So we turn the radio on and then of course we have our knob at the top that allows us to navigate through the channels. We can also use these up down arrow keys, well they're not arrow keys, but they're up down keys uh, here in the center uh, top row of the FPP and that also allows you to move up and down and navigate through the channels. Now moving uh, to the other parts and pieces at the top of the radio, you'll note that orange button right there. That's one of three programmable buttons that you have on the radio. They have the top programmable button and then they have PF1 and PF2. And these can be programmed for a number of different functions and you can also program for a short press or long press in terms of activating that feature. So in this case, what I have set up is I have for a short press, I'm gonna activate my flashlight. And I'm not going to cap on the flashlight people anymore because I find myself actually using that a lot lately. So it's a handy little convenience to have. Now, from there, it takes us over to the antenna and the factory antenna. I'll tell you, I've been pretty spoiled with the factory antennas on these two radios. They're actually very good antennas. I can't really say the same for the S88 Golf. This antenna is just kind of so-so. I've done some testing on it. I'm not going to publish the results of those tests because I don't do SWR and antenna tests on the channel anymore. Uh, the reason for that is I just get tired of going to war with people in the comments section over them picking apart my testing methodology. So I just do my own and I'll let you know the results and you'll have to trust me on that. Uh, if not, do your own testing, find out your own results. But I will tell you, this isn't a fantastic antenna and it's not particularly flexible either. This thing's actually fairly rigid for, a, uh, for an HT antenna. But fortunately, there's a really good alternative to this. Now, I've had this little Nagoya NA701 Golf kicking around for a bit now. And this is a Nagoya GMRS specific antenna. It is specifically tuned for the 462 to 467 megahertz range. I've also noticed that every other radio that I put this antenna on, it looks ludicrously small. But on this radio, given its size, it really... Uh, kind of, it fits, it's symmetrical. It's almost like it was made for this specific radio. So uh, I, I like that. And I'll give you my results anecdotally. With the factory antenna, the reception was okay. Uh, with this antenna, it was much improved. Uh, not something super dramatic, but I was definitely getting a lot less static on signals coming in. And I was able to pick up a little bit more than I could pick up uh, with the other antenna. Uh, and I usually, the way I do this is I'll set a couple of radios up across from each other in a room and then just run them on scan and see who picks up what and if both radios pick them up or they don't. And I noticed on some distant stations on another radio that I, I use as my, as sort of my control sample, um, this one was catching a little bit of it, but not a lot after I did this antenna and adjusted the squelch setting down from five to three, because that's what it comes from set from the factory worked a lot better at that point. So now that takes us over to the side of the radio here and I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for a second and talk for a moment about the PTT button. It is, uh, it's fairly well protected, um, although there's not a real heavy, heavy obvious gate around it. It's uh, just a little bit above flush with the, the shielding around the PTT. But what I like most about this is unlike a couple of other radios I have that seem to be pivoted at the top, so they work kind of like a clacker switch with a pivot pin at the top and then your sweet spot for the PTT is at the bottom. With this one, no matter where you press, you get good red meat. I like that on a PTT. There's no dead spots on this. I have a couple of radios that if I don't hit that PTT right, I hit that dead spot at the top, I don't key down. Um, so 
something to watch for there, but this is, a, this is an excellent little design. Then we have our PF1 and PF2 buttons that, again, are programmable for long or short and long presses, and they're programmable for a number of different functions. On these two, I only have short press done, and what we have for that is my PF1 button. Short press starts my scan, and you can see there the scan speed is not really uh, exceptional. It's okay. It's not sundial rated speed, but uh, it's not exactly uh, that sporty either, but it gets the job done. And when you uh, let off of the, the scan, it's going to take you back to the station that you started the scan from. And let me go ahead and turn this all the way up because the next button is the Monty button. So I short press and then I long pr uh, short press it again and it releases. What I like about that is some Monty buttons require you to hold the button down. In this case, you uh, just release it and then if you're trying to bring in a distant station, and that's what the Monty button is for. If you have a station that's just barely breaking squelch <clears throat> and you can sort of make them out, you can activate that Monty button and what it'll do is it removes all the squelch settings and you get every bit of the signal on that frequency that's possibly coming in. So you can catch that, you know, snippets of that distant conversation that you're trying to bring in. So that's the uh, that's that side. So that brings us around with the uh, that little sound since we heard how loud that speaker was. Brings us to the front of the radio <clears throat> and the speaker. And this is something that I always am watching for pretty closely on an IP67 rated radio is how well that audio sounds. Because in order that's going to be your biggest point of water intrusion. So they have to put some kind of membrane in there. If it's done right. It won't be, it'll be ever so slightly muffled. They always will have a little bit of muffling, but if they do it right, it'll be loud enough that it penetrates okay and it's not a problem. This is one of those. Um, the audio is just fine. It's nice and loud and authoritative and it's got a little bit of bass to it. It's not, it doesn't hurt your ears to listen to it. So it's a very good speaker. The microphone, no problem there with the membrane coverage there. Um, signal reports I get back are just fine. Everybody, uh, everybody likes what they're hearing, and I like what I'm hearing coming through the speaker. So good job there. Moving down to the display. The display is just your basic monochrome display, kind of a uh, bluish, um, kind of a white bluish background. Uh, it's plenty bright enough. Everything is pretty clear and easily readable. The uh, the letters, particularly on the on the uh, channel name, are nice and clear and present, so no no trouble there. It is a single line display. This is not a not a dual watch or dual receive type radio, so you don't have two display lines going. Some people like that. Some people don't. Some people are ambivalent. I'm one of those uh, people that can kind of take it or leave it. I have that set up on the KG935 Golf. It'll do the uh, the dual line display, but if it turn the radio on, you'll note I'm on a single line display on this one. Press the TDR button, brings that uh, that bottom um, bottom line of information up, and you can now monitor that bottom line or bottom band. But uh, a lot of times I just run that that one line because I don't really want a lot of chatter coming in. But if I am monitoring something specific in the background, I can do that as well. But on this one, uh, like I said, very straightforward, very direct. Uh, it's mainly, hey, this is the frequency I'm talking on, this is the frequency I'm monitoring, this is the frequency I'm working on. Simple. Not a lot of bells and whistles to get in the way, and I think that's what the designers of this radio were going for. But moving down to the front panel, we have our menu button in the upper right-hand corner, and that menu, just short press on that green button, gives you a really powerful menu setup so that you can do just about anything you need from the front panel. Yes, computer programming is a quick and efficient way of programming this, but it can be just as efficient, well, not as efficiently done, but it can be done uh, pretty easily from the front panel. So pressing uh, the yellow, or yellow key, I'm sorry, the green key goes takes you into menu, and of course pressing the red key is your exit. So like I said, lots of selections in there, and you also have shortcuts that are printed on the actual keys. And if reading the manual is pretty simple. Uh, rather than having to navigate all, all the way through the menu, you can just simply go into the menu and then hit a shortcut, and it'll take you directly to that. So if I wanted to go to CTCSS, I press that, it takes me right to 9, and I don't have to roll that dial, then exit out. So pretty effective system. Very well done, very well thought out. Good, good setup. Now moving over to this side, we've already talked about these two ports here. We have our speaker mic port. And again, uses a K1 type plug, so Bayafang speaker mics, Kenwood speaker mics, 
all work with this just fine and we have our USB-C charging. Now moving to the back of the radio, we have our battery and where we're supposed to have a belt clip. Now this is my one disappointing thing with this radio. It does have a belt clip, but the belt clip is not attached to the radio. And the reason why is there were no screws for the belt clip included in the packaging. Not a big deal. Shit happens, right? Um, you know, I, it's not the end of the world to me. I'll, I'll get some screws for this and I'll eventually mount this clip on, but I'll show you something. Neither one of these radios are using belt clips because I use Spectre Gear pouches to, uh, to put my radios into. And a Spectre Gear pouch for this radio will be available within the next couple of days. So um, now let's take a look at the battery. And the battery, there's a little thing here that I need to need to give you a tip on. It's something that kind of caught me short, but the battery latch, and you see here's another thing about this antenna, a lot more flexible than that other antenna. But our battery latch is here at the bottom. See that little uh, latch right there. So to open it, all we're gonna do is move that upwards. Now you have to do it pretty hard. If you baby it, it won't open all the way. You wanna hear that click. And when you hear that click, battery slides right off. And what it reveals to us is we have a 2000 milliamp hour battery. Um, not as big as the one for the KG935 Golf, which that's a radio that I literally charge on Sunday and use all week. I don't have a heck of a lot of time on this radio yet to tell you what the battery life is going to be, but I don't suspect it's gonna be a huge problem. There's not a lot of things going on in this radio. Uh, again, it's very focused, so uh, I think it's gonna be uh, pretty good on the battery life. But here's what I wanted to show you in terms of putting the battery on. Now, if you put the battery on and you slide it up, okay, we think we're on, we're not. Now, one would think, hey, I'm, I'm connected, and you can even turn the radio on. But I had this happen earlier. I put the battery on, and I turned the radio on, I set it down, picked it up. When I picked it up again, went to turn it on, and nothing, it was dead. And I thought, oh, damn, my radio is broken. Well, no, it's not broken. The battery had just come undone. And your connections are these two pins here and those two, those two contacts there. This has a gasket right here because, remember, it's an IP67 radio. And that gasket needs a little bit of pressure on it to latch this battery. So here's how you do it. Finger, finger, thumb, thumb. And then all you do is lock it in place. When you hear that, that click, and then give it a check, make sure it's locked in place, you are good to go. It's not defective, it's just properly designed. It's a good, solid, tight fit, as it should be. So that's kind of a run around the radio and a discussion of its features. I'm sure I missed something, or if I missed something, oh, you know what, I didn't talk about power settings. It's just two. It's uh, You either set this thing, well, here, it's a little hot because it's 110 degrees outside, sorry about that. Um, so you... Uh, you have two settings. You have half a watt and five watts. Later, I will do an actual power output test on this radio and let you know how close we get on those five watts. Um, and I suspect it's going to be fine. I actually haven't run the test yet, so I'm going to find out at the same time you do. But that video will follow directly after this one. Um, let's see, one other thing. I thought there was one other thing on here. No, nope, that's kind of about it. Like I said, if there if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section if I missed something or if I missed something and or, or you know a little bit about this radio and you noticed I missed something and, and you want to point it out, by all means, go ahead. Drop it in the comments. That's what it's there for. Um, but as far as what my usage of this radio is going to be, uh, one thing I really like about this radio is <clears throat> the KG935 Golf is a, a very versatile, very, really nice radio, but it's a little on the biggish side. Um, not so bad. I mean, it's not that it's cumbersome or anything, but uh, if I were looking for just a nice compact radio that would fit nicely in a pocket, something I could take on a hike, this would be the way to go. And in fact, where this is probably going to end up going is on my hiking pack, because as far as our uh, Sequoia National Park and Kings Canyon National Park, we have, uh, as far as radio coverage goes, our GMRS coverage is far superior to our ham coverage. I would uh, not be opposed to taking this on a hike. It would be uh, excellent. And something I like about this is this comes in four different color options. Now, I like this gray. This gray is pretty darn cool. And in fact, it's uh, pretty similar to the gray on a radio that I'm going to be reviewing real soon. And that's the KG XS20 Golf. Look for that uh, coming up maybe later this week. But I, I like that gray color. It's also available in a color they call earth, which is not flat dark earth. It's just brown. It's just kind of a lighter brown. Uh, not quite, maybe closer to coyote than tan. And the other two colors are pink and orange. 
Um, I don't really have a use for orange, but if if you're uh, talking like a marine thing or or a safety kind of thing where orange is is pretty prevalent in uh, in your gear, you've got that option. And for pink, I think I'm going to get one of these for my wife because she needs her own radio to put on the pack, and uh, she I think she'd like the pink. She's not a she's not a Barbie girl, but uh, I think she'd appreciate the irony of it all. So I may go ahead and get one of these for her, and then have her put that on her pack, and I'll use this on mine. But Again, being who I am, I'm not taking just one radio. This will be my GMRS radio. I'll have some other gear there as well. But I would be pretty confident taking this on a trail. And I would be pretty confident that if I got in some heavy weather uh, or some rugged conditions, this thing would last because this is a very solid radio. Very has a good feel to it. Uh, like all of the Ocean designs have, they, they feel very well engineered, very well built. Although there is no mill standard 810 rating on this radio, I'm going to suggest you can take a pretty good beating. And because it's a simple radio to operate, it's one that's going to be simple to operate under stress. And there is some value in that because while there's only a $10 split between this and the KG935 Golf, again, for some people, the versatility angles on the 935 Golf, really, they there's some folks that just don't need that or want that. They just want a simple, uncluttered, very straightforward, focused radio. And that's sort of the, uh, sort of the world where this radio lives. So... I happen to like it a lot. It's an excellent, excellent radio. So I think I've talked enough about this. At this point, I'll go ahead and bring it to an end. Thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee in Visalia, California. And as a reminder, um, my day job, SpectreGear.com, keeps the lights on around here and uh, gives me the opportunity to make videos like this. So if you're looking for any tactical gear or if you're looking for pouches for your radios or whatnot, please feel free to stop by our website at SpectreGear.com. And with that, I'll thank you once again. Have a wonderful day.